I have enjoyed this month simply because this being servanthood month. And I thank you for putting up with your pastor at times for things that I feel like the Lord's leading me to do. And because and, I'll tell you, if there's anything that the Lord preached about heavily, it was about servanthood. And I think if we want to get closer to the heart of the Father, it's less to do with sitting on his throne as it is taking up his cross. Amen. It's character building. Kind of rearranged the platform today because uh, I figured if Clint Eastwood could talk about the empty chair, I could too, but I decided I'd change that. I want to, I want to talk about servanthood. Turn, turn with me if you would. We're wrapping this up as our month closes. Book of John, chapter number 13. The little statue you see down here at the foot of the stage is a statue of Jesus washing Peter's feet. If you've ever washed somebody's feet, you know that's a very humbling thing. We're going to have a foot washing for long. I love doing it. Not everybody does. Start washing your feet on Sunday night before you come to church because <laughs> you never know which one it's going to bust out on. I did a foot washing service one time. Just felt the Lord tell me to do it. Didn't announce it. And as uh, soon as we started bringing out the bowls, three families got up and left. Too often we associate foot washing as forgiveness. Can I tell you that's not what foot washing is about. Foot washing is about love. There's a picture I have somebody gave me that is one of the most prized pictures I have. And it's a picture of that foot washing service. It lasted two and a half hours. I mean, people just, you wanted to serve. You wanted to... Wore the hot water heater out, man, because, well, cold water ain't no good. I'm telling you that right now. But it was a picture of love that as I sat in a chair, my feet were in the bowl. My wife was washing my feet. That was a picture of my wife's love for me. And I thank God for that. And it's a picture we need to have in our mind because that's what Christ does for us. Jesus didn't come as Lord and demand your worship and demand your respect. Jesus Christ came as Lord to show you how much he loved you. Amazing. John chapter 13. Verse 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he would depart from the world, from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. You need to get some coffee and some fudge and sit on that verse right there. That's a whole nother scripture, a whole nother sermon. He loved his own to the very end. And the supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper, laid aside his garments, took up a towel, and girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel which with he was girded. And then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing... Uh, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will after this. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I do not wash you, then you have no part with me. Let me tell you something, pride, church, pride will always keep you out from being in the intimate presence because that's exactly what this is. This is intimate presence, not something you do in front of everybody. This is a very personal and private thing. Our pride will keep us separated from the intimate presence of God. Lord, help us. Amen. Simon said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus, I can almost hear him laughing, saying, man, you've already had a bath. 
He who needs bathe needs only to wash his feet, but he is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. And I'm going to submit to you. Pastor Mike's just a little interpretation of this. This isn't just talking about Jesus, uh, about Judas Iscariot. But when he said, when he said, you are clean, but not all of you. When I read that, what I read into it is, it's not just, yes, I'm clean, but there's more of me that needs to be made clean. How do you know you are delivered to God daily? Line upon line, precept upon precept. Your walk, your journey of faith with Jesus Christ is a daily walking, drawing closer to him. The man of God I was 10 years ago, I better be closer to that. To him now than I was 10 years ago. I better be closer to God than I was a year ago. I need to be closer to God than I was yesterday. And he goes on and he says, so when he had washed their feet, taken his garments, sat down again, he said, do you know what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. And if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Here Jesus is teaching his disciples how to be a servant, how to take the, uh, uh, this and the water do we have water? Okay. The, this and the water and the towel, we, the Lord knows that we need this stuff. He knows that we've got to learn. We've got to learn by example. I know because of what I see my Christ do. That's why the, the, the blog that, that I do on the internet is called Tracking the Christ Life because it's not about following my own footsteps. I'm trying to follow the footsteps of Jesus. That if Jesus Christ could get on his knees, are you hearing me? And wash one of the stinkiest, nastiest parts of a body. To take on the role of the least of all the servants in the household. We should too. Man, I want to stand before the crowd and preach and feed 5,000 and raise the dead. And there, you walk in a room and everybody says, oh, there's Pastor Mike. Oh, his holy bishopness has entered the room. Oh, yeah, that feel good. It's not true. I had somebody say one time with these big old entryways we got right here. said, man, you need to put smoke machines in one of them. You know, and the light's kind of going crazy. Da, 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 you know, and come, come like you're Rocky, you know, just come. I said, man, I, I said, I'll tell you what happened. Everybody be laughing at me. Say, <laughs> you're doing it right now. Yeah, they wouldn't say, oh, there's the pastor. They said, oh, what a goofball. <laughs> Suddenly I have a new sermon for next Sunday. Jesus was showing his disciples. He said, this is how I need you to act. This is what I need you to do. I need you to be faithful to the Father and become more like who the Father has created you to be. Turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 3, just over to your right. I'm going to show you how servanthood should be lived out. Servanthood that we, we're going to wash somebody's feet today. There's one among you, we're going to wash your feet. But it's not just about washing feet in a service as much as it is living it out when you leave here. Are you hearing me? It's about, Lord, I want to be that person of God that you need me to be. In Acts chapter 3, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John 
about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on them with John, Peter said, look at us. And so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took up, they took him up by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankles received strength. And so he leaped up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising. And they knew it was he who sat at the begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. I want you to look with me right there at chapter 3. And let me show you what a servant looks like. How do you walk this out? Verse 1. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. That was early in the morning. Do you know what a servant is found doing? He's found doing what is right. If we would be a servant of the Most High God, we will found to be at the right place at the right time where God wants us to be. Because you never know where God wants to use you. You never know how God wants to move upon you. You never know how God wants to reach out and touch a life through your hands. Peter and John are, and, and, and specifically Peter. Let me show you Peter. Peter who was a failure. I love Peter because Peter is me. Peter is us. Brash, arrogant, rude. That's us. And here's Peter. Here's Peter learning how to be a servant, and now Peter's living it out. Peter, who's now been filled with the Spirit. And at the right time, at the right place, when God needed his people to do what he needed them to do, guess where Peter was? He was at the right place, at the right time, being led of the Father. God needed him there at the temple that day. Can I tell you, there's times you should be at church. I take my glasses off so I don't have to look at you, but I'm looking at every one of you right now. And you're here today. Thank you for being here today. Hey, if you're a guest here, I want you to know we love you. You're only a guest once. After that, you're family. You come to my house, I'll refill your tea glass one time. After that, you get it yourself because that's family. We want you to feel welcome here. But if we're not being faithful, are you hearing me? If we're not being faithful, and that's what a servant is. A servant is found faithful by his master to be, to be doing what he's supposed to be doing. If a servant got caught by his master misbehaving, he's going to get punished. Can I tell you, I don't want God finding me doing wrong. I want him to find me doing right. And I want to be at the right place. When God calls me to be at the right place at the right time, I want to be there so God can use me. Because it's easy to look at other people and say, man, God uses them. God blesses their life. Can I tell you, it's because they're being at the right place in the right time. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Let me tell you something. Preachers don't preach on church attendance just because we like to have as many people here as we can. I want you to hear that. I won't be your pastor forever. I won't. So hear me today. I don't preach come to church so I can feel good about all the filled chairs we have. I say come to church because God says come to church. And I appreciate those that are watching by video live right now or recorded. But I'm telling you, even on the video, God doesn't want you sitting in front of the TV watching church all the time. God wants you in his house. Because there are times when God is in his house and you ain't going to get off the TV what you got in his house. It's very easy to think I showed up on Sunday morning isn't God fortunate. Mm. Let me tell you, I'm going to meddle here just a second. The Bible says, do not grow tired and weary of coming to church as some are. In the last days. You don't come to church for me. You don't come to church to please mom and daddy. You don't come to church for any other reason but to find God. And let me tell you, the best place you're going to find God is in his house. The right place at the right time, John and Peter were there. 
because there was a man who was carried daily at the gate. And it just so happened that they got there just at the time that the beggar came to the gate. And as they walked up, he said, hey man, give me something. Peter looked at him, put his eyes on him, and Peter said, look at us. Look at us. Where was the man at that was asking for alms? Down on the ground. Ashamed of his state. A beggar does not look into a man's eyes. He looks at the ground and asks for alms because he does not have enough pride to look another man in the eyes. And what did Peter say? Hey, man, look at me. He's inviting the man to have worth and value. This morning's message is entitled The Empowering Servant. It's who God has called us to be is to empower others. Just as Christ came to empower Peter to become a greater man of God, so it is that God uses us to encourage others to rise up and be a better woman of, or man of God in their own life. Look at us. And the man looked up because he thought he was going to get something. And Peter said, man, silver and gold, I don't got. Have you ever said that before? <laughs> Especially if you go to pay your bills. Silver and gold, I do not have. But... What I do have. You know what a servant does? A servant doesn't hoard what he has. A servant is a giver. And here Peter says, silver and gold I don't got, but what I have, the greatest thing I have, I give to you today. A servant is one who not only does his master's bidding, but when it comes upon himself, he still knows how to serve. He's at the right place, at the right time, giving away the best that he has. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And what happened? Now, I want you to see this. Look with me in your Bibles. Verse 7. And he took him by the right hand. Peter reached down. Peter reached down. And what does it say? He lifted him up. Man, if you've ever been in a Pentecostal church, you Pentecostals are weird. I'm just telling you right now. You're crazy. I love you. I got here as quick as I could. You know what we want to do? We want to speak to that thing. Rise up. Rise up. And if that doesn't work, I get louder. <laughs> Rise up. Like the volume level makes a difference. Can I tell you, it wasn't about Peter speaking to it as much as it was Peter reaching down and giving his hand. I want you to see this. Peter reached down to the man. Nobody wanted to touch. Nobody wanted to give anything to. He wasn't content just to look at him and talk with him. He reached down to what? Help him up. Let me tell you, there are some things that will not come about until you put your hand to it. Put your hand to it. And he reached down and he grabbed him and he lifted him up where? To where Peter was now. What does a servant do? A servant is one who is there at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing, giving all that he has so that he can reach down and empower somebody else. We as servants are called to serve one another as we serve him. Man, that guy got up. He leaped. He danced. How do you know there was dancing in church that day? There was some dancing going on. And man, all the people filled with wonder. And Peter, verse 12, Peter saw the, how the people responded. Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Why are you looking at us like this? And he preached a sermon. Whew. Preached a sermon. Why are you acting like this? Because it's very easy for the servant to do something. Now hear me. Listen. It's very easy for the servant to do something. And they want accolade for what they do. I enjoy it when somebody says, hey, Pastor Mike, man, that was a good sermon. I like that. Do you know whose opinion I really lean on? It's my wife. Because I'll have five people say, Pastor Mike, that was a good sermon. And I'll go home and i say, what? I say, hon, how was that? 
That was not your best effort. <laughs> Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Have you know what I'm talking about? And it's very easy for us to get caught up in wanting the accolade of what we did at the moment. Let me tell you something. A servant is not one who lifts himself up. But Peter said, why do you look at us like we're gods? Why do you look at us like we did something special? It's Jesus Christ who did this. Because a true servant does not serve himself. The true servant is a representative of the master. And let me tell you something. When we are doing things for other people, it is not about us. It's about him. Come on, somebody. It's about him. Peter got it right. Peter who's a failure. Peter who blew it. Peter who didn't do it right. He realized it's not about me. It's about my master. Because if it was up to my own skill, there's no way that guy would still be on the ground. I'd pick him up and he'd collapse like an old spring. Just God has called us to be servants. A servant who's willing to get down on their knees, roll up their sleeves, get dirty with humanity so that at the end they could take them by the hand, lift them up, encourage them, dust them off, and turn them loose so that that one can go down the road See another that was in the same state they were. Or somebody hear me today. Are you with me? They'll get down on their knees. And they'll take up another soul. And they'll raise them up. What would that do to our nation? Listen to me. America, who used to be a great godly nation, is not great and godly because we're too wrapped up with ourselves. What would happen if more people became servant-minded and less power-minded. Disciple-makers who create disciple-makers who create disciple-makers. The beauty of marriage. The beauty of marriage is not that your spouse does everything you want them to do. The beautiful part of marriage is because I do everything I can to make my wife happy and blessed and feeling treasured and adored and loved. And on her part, she's turning around and she's setting her own needs aside and she's doing everything to make me feel loved and blessed and special because she loves me. Can I tell you, when two spouses are so busy trying to outdo and love one another, you will not have time to fight. Are you hearing me? Where does the fighting take place? When the pride gets in the way. You don't give me. I'm selfish. That's why we lay down our life. So that we're no longer selfish. We're selfless. The whole month has been spent trying to bring across to you one word, selflessness. That I can lay self aside so that Jesus Christ can be lifted up through my life. That somebody else's life can be touched and I am empowered to go and give them worth and value that they have in Jesus Christ. Do you do that, church? There are some of you who do. I'm blessed to be in this church because this is, this is actually a very servant-minded church. I love this church. Brother Woody and I were talking about this the other day. This is a church where people serve. And there's a few of you that have been recognized. But what you do matters. Let me tell you, there's, there's plenty of us that we do. But I want you to know, people watch. If I call out your name, I'd like for you to stand this morning. Is Misty Moore here? I saw her earlier. Is Misty in here? Children's Church. 
Very first name I call out, and what's she doing? She's serving. Thank God for that. I love it. Brother Ray Murray, would you stand? Sherry White. Here's a, here's a special one in the list. Rachel Goodman. Because how do you know it's not just adults? Hon, is your daddy here? He's at work. Praise God. Jonathan Goodman. Sister Weed of Balance. Pat Edwards. She was here earlier. She had to leave. And Freddie Kratz. Freddie's not, I don't think Freddie's, is Freddie here? I don't think Freddie's here. He's at work. <laughs> I love it. You that are standing right now, I want you to know somebody saw what you do. Somebody recognized what you did. This is not a pat on the back and an attaboy to make you proud. This is simply to say, someone saw you being faithful. Thank you for being found faithful. Can we give these a hand of appreciation for what they do? God bless you. Y'all may be seated. I'm going to ask my wife to come up here if she would. There is one couple that was notably mentioned. And I didn't read their name on purpose. But it was David and Emily Lingfield. I didn't mention your name simply because your pastor's at the church. And as pastors, it's our duty to be a servant. And I want to say thank you because that means you're doing your job right. There's one that we want to honor today. It's a dubious honor. It really is. To be proud to say, hey, I'm the servant of the year. No. But it's different. Because there's one among you that was overwhelmingly called and said, that person to me represents what Jesus Christ looks like. That person to me, when I, when I look around our church, I see one who serves and gives and does just like these. But there's one that really stands out to me. And I want to recognize that special someone today. Kathy Hull, would you please come? I'll tell you right now, this is a special lady that's coming. This church would literally fall apart were it not for her efforts. you have a seat, please? Somebody called the other day and said, are, are you the pastor in charge of the church? I said, well, I'm in charge, but do you want to talk to the person who knows what's going on? <laughs> I'll sure put you through to her. I'll ask my wife to come if she would. Kathy, we love you. And we thank God for what you do. You're a prized possession to Jesus Christ. And this church is honored to have you. Lord, we call these feet beautiful. 
We call these feet special. We call these feet holy because these are feet of a servant. And Father, as we wash these feet, we speak a blessing over her. Because what she does, she does not do for human recognition. I would dare say at this very moment is probably the most humbled time she's ever been. But Father, we thank you for this precious woman. We thank you for her sacrifices. We are honored, Lord, that you blessed us with her heart, with her mind, with her hands to work. And Father, what we pray right now is your best blessings upon her. And that, Father, may we as a church, may we as a church, Lord Jesus, emulate the things that we see of servanthood. Because I know there's so much that nobody else sees, not even me. There's so many things that she does to touch lives and empower lives. She does it not for recognition. She doesn't do it for gain. She does it, Lord Jesus, for your glory. And Father, what I pray is help us to do the same. Lord, we thank you for this precious soul and for all those that serve, for all those that work, for all those that do, because I believe there will come a day, Lord, when we will all stand before you. And you will rise and call us blessed for being faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Would you stand? And would you help me give a great big hand to the Lord Jesus Christ for this precious one? takes vacation so he can work here. Brad, he never leaves my office without saying, do you need anything? David Langfield, that will park your, go get your car when it's pouring down rain. David Hall, the things that he does for the church, it's just things that people have no idea that people do, but you may see the things that I do. But all these other people, they deserve this more than I do. But I just want to say thank you. Amen. Amen. I ask you, church, live a life worthy of being seen by God, not others. We may never get a little statue. We may never get somebody to wash our feet. We'll get something better. We'll get a God who will say, I have seen what you've done in private. I've seen how you touched lives with no regard for your own. I've seen the sacrifice you make. Well done, good and faithful servant. How many ready to hear the Lord say that about you? Raise your hands and let's worship the Lord together. Father, we thank you for this good day. We thank you, Lord, because you have called each of us to become servants. You've called us, Lord God, to submit to you. 
that, Lord God, while we honor one among us, that, Lord Jesus, I would pray let us all be found worthy before you because, God, we do not count our own life dear or precious, but we lay it down and we take up our cross and we follow you every day, God. We follow you no matter where you lead. We follow you no matter what you ask. That we are going to be at the right place at the right time, doing the right things, giving away the best that we have, reaching down and taking up one who is beneath us to make them over us so that, Father God, they will do the same thing and follow in the same footsteps that we follow. And that's of the greatest servant of all, Jesus Christ himself. And God, we thank you for this day for this time. And Father, I pray that you would go with us as we leave this place now. That Lord God, we are commissioned today to leave here, not to just go out and live this day and live this week for ourselves. Lord, we are commissioned to leave here today, to leave this house as a servant. That Lord God, when you call, when you look, when you ask, we'll be there and we'll be ready. Thank you God for this good day. And Father, we just give you glory and give you honor for it all. In Jesus' name. Someone love the Lord said a great big amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful day. Stop by and see Brother Jimmy and Trey and Tina. Be sure that you tell them that you love them. You're glad they're here. Stop by and see Kathy. Hug her neck. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Don't forget to be with us at the Praise and Worship Center in Malvern on Bank Street tonight. Six o'clock. God bless y'all.